Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about the benefits, advantages or disadvantages of doing a post-bachelorate um, research opportunity. And for this topic, we welcome Daniela and Gabriela and thank you for being here with us today. My name is Gabriela Bosco Ortiz. I'm from Puerto Rico. I did my undergraduate in Cornell, graduated in 2015. Now I'm uh, going for my fifth year uh, of the PhD at Yale, and I'm studying neuroscience. Yeah, so my name is Daniel Colos Rios. Um, I'm also from Puerto Rico. Did my undergrad at the University of Puerto Rico at Maya West. I did my bachelor's in chemistry, and right now I'm doing a postback at Yale, where I'll be starting this fall the MD PhD program. That's great. Again, thank you guys for being here. The reason why I invited you guys is because I've been receiving a lot of emails and questions from our audience um, who are very interested in knowing what is a post-bachelorate opportunity? What are they going to get from these um, research opportunities? How to apply? And in general, what are the credentials that they need? And so we prepared five main questions to sort of try to get at this. And you both did your post back programs in different ways, but you both have the experience and we wanted to know what did you learn from these experiences so that the audience can learn about them and, and maybe decide if they want to do it or not. So we'll start with the first question, which is at, at which point in your career did you decide to do a post program? How did you learn about these programs? And why was that your decision of going ahead and doing a post program? I guess like I decided that I was gonna do a post program in, in my senior year of university. So I was considering just applying to the PhD, but I had talked to a professor I did a summer a research program with and friends that had a, like graduated already. And they all had mentioned um, about the opportunity of gaining more research experience before applying. And I really liked the idea, um, especially like during my senior year, I was trying to finish with some core courses. Uh, now a lot of programs are dropping the GRE, thankfully, but at the time that I was applying, that wasn't the case. So I was very nervous about like doing, performing well in the GRE, writing the essays and getting everything in order. Um, I wanted to be able to present like the best application I could. And I also wanted to just feel like I was a strong candidate. So just the idea of being able to apply without the coursework was intriguing, but most importantly, just being able to like do more research without coursework just seemed like a, a great opportunity to me um, that would just ultimately be advantageous for my uh, career. It was in my last semester of senior year uh, when I decided to pursue uh, some postback training. And I heard of it because I think it's a very popular thing to talk about for applicants um, for MD PhD programs because um, each year more students do a post back or have some kind of like gap year, whether it's working in industry or or just like doing research at an institution or whatever kind of gap year, I think it's becoming more popular every year. Okay. And maybe you guys can mention how did you went on and apply for your um, post back program? Mine was an online application. So there are for more applications to, to do um, different kinds of programs, for example, like most of them will be called PrEP. So it's a post-bachelorate research opportunity program and they're mainly funded by the NIH, but they're hosted by different universities. Um, you can actually go directly into university websites to look for information of which ones have PrEP or don't. So usually you apply in spring and that's exactly what I did. They just want your GPA. They wanna ensure that you will be graduated by the end of that semester. Um, they'll ask you for a personal statement the way a graduate school would. And they will also ask for letters of recommendation. Some of them will also interview you usually online. And programs vary with each other. So some of them will be very structured with classes. Some will let you take classes in the university. Some will provide um, help in, with the application process. Um, but overall, it's mainly a paid research opportunity for our students that were recently graduated from undergrad and are interested in pursuing higher degrees afterwards. I didn't really go through a prep program application. Um, I spoke with one of my mentors um, from the summer program I did at, at Yale, and we kind of got to this conclusion that uh, a gap year or 
post back would be the best um, training for me in order to become a more competitive applicant um, for MDPHC program. And yeah, so the only thing I really needed was my diploma just to certify and confirm that, that I finished my undergraduate studies, I finished my, my uh, bachelor's degree. Um, but besides that, I don't think anything else. So just to reiterate, Gabriela applied to a specific program and then um, Daniel basically emailed a specific professor. In this case, he knew the professor, but you certainly have the possibility of emailing a professor that you have not worked with previously, but you're interested in their work and you can also acquire postback opportunities that way. And kind of piggybacking on what you're saying, um, some, some labs have in their websites whether they're looking for like uh, a post back in their lab. So let's say like, you know, job openings or, or you know, whatever, um, post back trainee or, or postgraduate associate or whatever the title that they're looking for, or lab manager, lab technician, research assistants. There are, there are a lot of lab, different titles that are basically just, you know, right. for that year. Yeah, so this is good to know. Thanks for mentioning that. There might be several different names for, for the same position, but it's technically the same. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the second question. Um, no, third, actually. So how did you, how does your postback experience compare to other research experiences that you have had? I think that the, that prep was a unique research experience from things that I had done before because for example when you're doing a research while taking for example college coursework their priority will always tend to be the the coursework itself um, you want to make sure that you're doing well in your classes but in when you're doing prep your main focus is always going to be like the research and even if you are taking classes and everything it, it's not going towards a degree so it just like that research experience is really what you're gonna like focus on. And in that same vein, it, it's different from what you're doing in summer research because it, it's just a longer period of time. So there's just like uh, enough time for you to be able to understand the background of what you're working on and actually be able to develop at least a small project. Um, even if you don't necessarily like go through the whole thing, definitely you'll have plenty of time to actually train in, in what you need to be doing and, and get some uh, actual experimental work done. So yeah, it, it, I think that it does assimilate to what you would experience uh, in grad school. Maybe in, in that same line, what, what would you say are the advantages that you found you guys obtained from these experiences? So the advantages I would say you definitely develop independence towards your project. You gain a lot more confidence in what you're doing. You have more time to, you know, focus on your applications because you don't have to worry about other coursework, although you could take graduate coursework, which is one of the things I actually did. Um, so uh, one of the advantages was that I could take a, a graduate level course and that kind of, kind of prepares me and gives me a perspective of what, a, what grad school classes look like. Um, so that's one of them. Another thing is that time um, in the lab, more confidence, independence, and all that. Gabriela, anything that you want to add? I think that something that um, I didn't expect to be the case is that you actually also get a, a good sense of like what environments you work well in. I think that uh, in undergrad, again, because you're not like spending all of your time in in the laboratory, at least in my experience, then. I wasn't cognizant of like the different type of life, lab dynamics. During grad school, the most important thing is your mentor than the project. So I don't know, like, for example, for me, it was nice to know that, um, that I did want to have a mentor that I could kind of interact with. Uh, and for example, in, in my case, maybe I don't love like huge labs. So that was really good going in because I just getting that experience of like, what works for me and I'm seeing the value of like uh, having healthy and positive like lab dynamics that was great and with that being said I guess uh, another good thing about prep is just being able to network more with professors maybe as an undergrad you don't really like professors are like more for lectures and things so in prep you 
get to actually talk more with professors and, and that was really helpful for applications later on. If, if you take the, if you get out of your way to network because you'll have the opportunity to do so, like you never know how that's gonna help you later on in your career. So it's another plus. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say actually um, something on, in those lines. Um, I am an example of a person who applied to a PhD program directly from underground. And I can really say that an advantage that, that I've seen for you guys is definitely that you get to experience like firsthand, what is it to work in a laboratory uh, that is mostly focused on research? For example, I come from a university, like a small university where research is not the top priority. There is research, but teaching is the priority. And so I didn't, even, even after doing summer internships outside of my home institution, I didn't really get a sense of what are different lab, lab dynamics, what are different types of mentorships that I would or would not like to work um, with. Um, and I think that that's definitely a huge plus that you guys got from these programs. Um, and maybe along those lines, we could maybe finalize this interview by talking about who would you recommend this experiences for? I think that from undergrad, I think it's just a, a good idea. I think it's coming increasingly common to to be either in prep or do a master's or be in the field work before getting into a doctorate. I think it's just a, a very safe and low cost uh, decision. I would definitely recommend a post-bac uh, experience for anyone applying for MD-PhD, honestly. I think every year the amount of people that go straight from undergrad to MD-PhDs directly is very low um, because because of the reason I kind of mentioned before, because once you're in a postback or you, you have your gap years, you have more experience in research and a better understanding of science and academia just in general. Um, so I would recommend it to basically anyone applying for MD PhDs, especially if you don't have a lot of research experience or if the research you've had so far hasn't had the success you would expect it to have. So one of the things, and by success, I mean like, whether you have papers or you have presented your, your research at a symposium or, you know, poster presentations, oral presentations. I think that's one of the ways that you can show that your research has been successful and that you've been, you know, dedicated to your research. Um, but not, but also I don't want to like discourage if you haven't because science is not really up to our hand. I mean, we can only do so much, but science doesn't always work. Um, but I feel like a post back will definitely give you this opportunity um, and time to actually work on your research um, with your undivided attention, basically. So thank you guys for such an amazing insight into these programs. I hope that this information helps our audience make a more informed decision about what their career is going to look like, especially if they think they need a little bit more research in order to apply for a doctoral program. Um, so thank you uh, for being here and thank you to the audience for watching us. Stay tuned. We're going to continue uploading videos with more information like this on summer programs, post back programs and doctoral programs, how to apply to them, what do you need as an applicant and things like that. So thank you for watching and never forget that you can do STEM.